This is the plaintiff, Anna Radonsky. She says she was sitting in her car at a parking spot at the local food store when she heard a loud boom and felt a big jolt. The defendant's shopping cart crashed into her driver's side door, denting it something awful. The careless woman shoved the cart across the parking lot, missing the cart corral area, and the cart T-boned her. The nervy woman pretended nothing happened, got into her car, and when she confronted her, she said, shopping carts hit cars all the time. Is this woman crazy? She's suing for $981.61, the cost to repair her damaged car. This is the defendant, Laura Spignessi. She says it was a snowy, windy day. When she pushed her cart towards the cart corral, the wind blew it. It hit a snow pile and veered into the plaintiff's car. She told the woman she was sorry, but things like this happen all the time. The woman started acting aggressively, waving her hands and arms around like a lunatic. So she drove away because she felt threatened. Bottom line, she didn't intentionally push the cart into her car. It was a freak of nature, and she owes nothing. She's accused of careless carding. All parties, please use your right hand. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're Anna right. Rodonsky, yes. you are suing Laura Spignessi for $981.61, the amount you say she owes you to repair your car because she damaged it with a shopping cart, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, we have a... Um, Diagram up here. Can you walk over to the diagram and explain to me how it happened? We actually do have a shopping cart. We do. Yes, we do. We're good. Pick a car to be you. This is my car. Okay. I, th I think the receptacle was either here or here for the carriages to go into. And her car was somewhere over here. Somewhere, like, okay. about that far. I, got you. Um, I was sitting in my parked car. I saw her face like approaching my car and I turned and I looked and as I saw her face I felt the bang of the cart in my Wait, car. Wait, where was she? Well, she was walking towards my car. So first I saw her face because I didn't see the carriage because it was below my car level. And then like it, was, it happened so quick, I saw her face and then the bang, I felt the carriage of the car. And then I saw her take the carriage, put it into the receptacle. Wait, wait. So that's the, the, um, it ends up hitting there where your driver's door is? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then she does what? Because the receptacle's over here, right? Yeah. It may be this one. Okay. And she does what? Close. And then she, I saw her take the carriage, put it in the receptacle, and then walk back to her car. Like as if nothing? Yeah. And so I got out of my car, and I was like, I think that was a carriage that hit my car. So I get out, and I looked at my car door, and there was three scratches, the top one also with a dent, and then also the driver's mirror had a scratch on it. I walked over to her car, she opened the window, and I said, you know, would you like to come and look at what you did to my car? And she said, I don't have time for this. And I said, well, I said, I think you should have time for this because I think you're responsible for what you did to my car. And she said, carriages hit people's cars in parking lots all the time. And I said, but this is a little bit different. You pushed it and it hit my car. And she said, I don't have time for this. And I said, are you kidding me right now? And it was before Christmas, like a week before Christmas. And I said, are you kidding me right now? And she just started backing up. And as she pulled away, I said, have a nice day, have a nice Christmas, or something sarcastic to her. And then I took her license plate number. I went to the police station. Did you memorize it, or did you take, were you able to take a picture I of it? I memorized it and wrote it down. I went to the police station. I filed a um, report with the police. I told the officer the story. He said she's absolutely responsible for the damages. I filed the report, which I submitted, or I have here. Um, he called me about a week or so afterwards because he was going to try to get in touch with her to talk to her. He did get eventually got in touch with her. She admitted to pushing her carriage, said she tried to put it in the receptacle and it bounced off and that's how it hit my car. He said, doesn't matter, you know, you're still responsible. She said she didn't think she was responsible, so I filed the thing for the okay. small Okay, let me hear from you. What happened? Would you like to go over there and explain it to me also? Go ahead Please. and go. So the receptacle is here. My car was not this far away. It okay. was here. I put my groceries in the rear of my vehicle, pushed right. the carriage towards the carriage receptacle, and it there was a it had snowed the day before. Um, right. It hit the snow. 
and veered. It was a very windy day and veered off into her. Wait, vehicle. what? Wait, 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 back up. Um, how is the receptacle? Uh, so what, receptacle not, let me fall this again. Is, this is okay. too large. So but receptacle. doesn't it have um, carriage return? Exactly. Yeah, I'm sorry, can I talk? Uh, the metal bars that, you know. Yeah. And then you're here, and what do you do? And I push the carriage towards the carriage return, and it ends up Who are you here. pushing it to? To the carriage return. Is there a carriage return ferry that's going to catch it and put it no. inside where it belongs so something like this doesn't happen? No. So you push it. It, and it, then and it's a very windy day because that's oh so it was a very bad idea to push it then <clears throat> probably mm. okay and then what happens and it hits the snow here and hits into her car and your defense is what well my defense is first of all her car is a 2013 i have no idea if those scratches were there prior to me hitting yeah anybody can say that what's your defense your defense you have just explained to me that in typical, incredibly arrogant, self-serving fashion, you can't be bothered to actually place the cart inside the cart receptacle, so you push it so that it's someone else's problem, then it became someone else's problem, and when that someone else tells you it's their problem, your answer is, I'm too busy, I don't have time to wait. What's your defense? Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So, uh, defendant's position is, look, you know, you go to a, a, a parking lot where there are shopping carts, you know, they're going to roll into cars, cars are going to get dings, and I shouldn't be responsible for the repairs. You buying that? I'm buying it. No, not paying anything. What? So you think that this defendant is right, that you don't have to pay if you ro if your shopping cart rolls into some other car? Yes, that's their fault. Not not the person who owned the car's fault. Okay, so it's the shopping cart's fault. Gotcha. No, whoever had the shopping cart, they are at fault. If the shopping cart hits my car, you are at fault, and I want you to pay for it. Fair point. Going inside the courtroom. I want you to do something for me. Okay. Switch those two cars, okay? Let's say that Ms. Radonsky's putting away her groceries, and it's your car that's parked there. What, what do you drive? Buick Encore. And then Ms. Radonsky's too busy to put the cart in its own receptacle so it doesn't damage another car, and pushes it. And her, she looks me square in the face and says, what? It's windy and there's snow. Do you have to pay for your own car? Does that sound fair? Well, I think a lot of people don't even return the carriage to the shopping cart receptacle. Yeah, they don't. Most people don't. And so flying carriages, in my opinion, is a pretty common thing in a grocery store. Right. Okay. So let me see if I've got this straight. Your answer, who are the gentlemen who are with you? Uh, my husband and my son. Okay. All right. Gentlemen, this is what she's saying. Hey, this kind of thing will happen. Tough for you because you parked in a parking lot. Okay, lots of people have dings on their cars in parking lots. That's what you're saying, right? Lots of people do have dings on that their cars. That is what you're saying. And yeah. that's what you had the audacity to tell the police. I did not say that to the police. Oh, the police say you do. That's right in the report, that that's exactly what you said to them. The same thing she says you said to her, that lots of cars have dings in parking lots. So you literally push a cart, and because of wind and snow, or not because of wind and snow, it really doesn't matter to me, it ends up hitting another car, and you don't want to pay for the damages because, hey, stuff happens. You left instead of staying there and waiting for the police? Well, she used profanities at me, and so I decided that I wasn't going to stay there and listen to her. Girl, you should have taken your car and closed her in. <laughs> go ahead and go back. Yes. Do you have insurance? Do I have Car insurance? Yes, it's not covered under our car insurance. I contacted our car insurance. But why? Oh, because of the fact that it's you doing the damage and not your car. Um, show me the, the, uh, quote. the quote. Now, you have some additional things you wanted to show me that you submitted regarding pictures. Can, we can talk about that now. Go ahead. Um, on her uh, quote from the auto body shop, which uh -huh. she gave, there are three markings. Um, each of those markings are less than two inches apart. I assume this is on her door. Let me see what you're looking at to conclude that. Is that a picture of the markings? Yes. Okay. That's the copy of Just the a second, ma'am. Sure. Okay. Who wrote each marking is less than two inches apart? I did. How did you conclude that? Did you measure it? I measured it. You measured it where? 
from the photo. How, how can you possibly measure it from the photo? Well, each of those three markings is what she's indicating are, were done from the shopping cart. Did you take a ruler and measure from here to here? Yes. Okay, why don't we do it this way? Hand her this picture, please. You can't measure it on a photo. Photo is a perspective depending on how far or close you are to it. You would have to measure the actual distance. Does that look to you like two inches apart? No. Right. That's the actual damage to her well, car. Well, that, that was the copy I received from the police Yes, report. I know, but don't, don't you know that? That you can't look at the photo and measure it? You would have to measure it on the car to see? Like, if I stand a block away, then they're going to look at an eighth of a center. You know, that's not going to mean that that's actually the damage. Here is the damage to the car. It's exactly where the, the, the binding is on the darn... Who's got the picture? Do you have the picture of the shopping cart? Like, we need to see it? Yeah. So your defense then is that, oh, it's just, it's almost perfect. Okay, so your defense is that that couldn't have possibly caused this, except for that A, you were seen causing it, B, you admit that that contact was made, and C, it actually is exactly where the bars are on the carriage, right? And the rest of the car looks pretty impeccable. Miss Spignessi, um, I'm, I'm less concerned over your rudeness on that day and your inconsideration of other cars on that day and your hubris to flee the scene of an accident like you did than I am about your continued defense of yourself instead of just paying this. It's ridiculous. $981.61 verdict for the plaintiff, plus, of course, your filing fees. Thank you. Well, probably much, not much surprise to anybody. The, the plaintiff has prevailed in this case, Ms. Vignesi. What do you have to feel about what the, or say about what the judge just said to you? Well, I guess she feels that it's right, but I still feel in my heart it was just an act of God and an, a complete accident. That's all. You're kidding. What do you think about this? I don't know. It seemed like the judge was on, all on her side to me. She didn't push it into her car. The she wind, did? She no, did? No, 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 no. The wind pushed it into her car. So that's what I feel. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but you're on the hook Thank for you. it. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Maybe you've learned something. Yeah. Okay. I think most people are just astonished that you don't feel you're responsible for paying it. Well, I just don't. I'm sorry, but that's my okay. opinion. Everybody's entitled to yep. their opinion. You're right. You're yeah, absolutely right. You. Okay, very good. That's why you ended up in court. Here comes the plaintiff, Ms. Radunsky. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, most people, well, I don't know. Maybe most people would have prevailed, I mean, pursued this and taken her to court. You, for $900, it's worth it. It is a lot of money, yeah. It's just about being responsible. Were you surprised? Did she? That she, yeah, I was she surprised with her way? actions. Yes, yes, yes. I was like, this is crazy. Okay. And, yeah. Well, good luck. All right. <laughs> All thank right. you very thank much. Thank you very much. Wow. What do you think, Harvey? Okay, so anyway, this defendant is totally wrong. If you have a shopping cart, you have to control the shopping cart, and if you don't secure it and it hits another car, you are always responsible. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.